What is up guys, Wrestling Premiere is here. The two biggest slimy bastards of my childhood. When you add JBL to the mix, there's a two-third chance of me raging hard. Like, I just hated Raid RKO. Edge in particular was so unlikable, even more so than Randy Orton, and he just knew how to get under my skin as a kid. So WWE thought to pair them together. This led to a very great run which showcased just how truly slimy Edge was. Like as bad as Orton may have been in storyline, Edge was on a whole other level and it showed during this run. Like from the very beginning, it was known that this was eventually going to get ugly, you know, two huge, huge egos teaming up together, what could possibly go wrong? Now, again, once again, I gotta mention, this is a remake. The reason why I'm remaking this is because of copyright issues. Add to that, the video wasn't good in the beginning, so, yeah. But, the main reason is because of the copyright thing. I used to use far too much footage back then, and, and it's not such a good idea. With regards to the content recently, yeah, I'm starting to upload more now. You guys should expect some great videos coming soon. I'm not gonna say what they are, because once I say something, I tend not to do it. You guys can back me up on that, but I got some cool stuff planned for the next few weeks. Hopefully you guys enjoy Alright, now let's talk about where both men were in their career at this point. Edge had just come off the run of his career. His 2006 was flaming hot. It was absolutely tremendous in every facet, and he was the best heel, he was one of the best characters, had great matches, a memorable summer in itself with John Cena. Randy Orton, on the other hand, his booking was very inconsistent, and this has to do with the fact that he was difficult to work with backstage. He was suspended, was causing up a stir every so often, and this was so bad that a main event push, a world title push, was out of the question. Kayfabe wise, Edge and Randy Orton had shared a common bond. They hated DX. In Edge's case, they cost him the WWE Championship, and in Orin's case, well, he had to be spoken into it. Alright. On the October 9th, 2006 episode of Raw, Edge hosted the cutting edge with his guest being Randy Orton. JR wasn't so sure if the ring could be able to hold those two egos, and the Radar Superstar immediately went where it hurts. They said that since Orin won the world title in 2004, he's done absolutely nothing since. Men was greatly offended, but Edge explained things. Yeah, sure you've been in huge matches, but you've lost every single one of them. Randy was threatening to drop Edge, and so he quickly pointed to August 16, 2004 as the cause of all of Randy's misfortunes. That, of course, shut up the legend killer. Edge went on to add that Triple H's selfishness cost him everything, and the reason why he cares is because it happened to him last week. DX cost him the match, Shawn Michaels in particular, the same man who taught Triple H every power-hungry move. The Radar Superstar was fed up with being treated like a joke. He felt that some people, themselves, should take a stand against DX. Edge made his offer, and Orton was in. He then gave DX two words, it's over, before officially shaking Edge's hand, forming an alliance. So there you have it. Both men shared a common bond, and it led to one of the best thrown together tag teams of that decade, in my opinion. Because those two, you know, they complemented each other very well. And they had a built in story, you know, with the whole egos thing clashing eventually. The following week, Edge and Randy Orton decided to poke fun at DX by dressing up as them. Triple E was choking on water, Michaels' back was hurting, and this was pretty unexpected. But the best part, though, was this fans in LA were booing as Edge asked if they're ready. To him, it showed how pathetic they were. You know, if this is what it takes to get the fans on their side, then he don't want none. You suck chance intensifies Edge's talking about how they don't have to embarrass others to further their career, and to them it was all childish. Orin started speaking and felt that because of the fans, DX could do whatever they want, and this man seriously sounded like a lunatic. He was absolutely possessed. He then promised that they're gonna kill the legend of DX, and rated RKO gave the fans two words. Those being, you suck, before DX came out. The duel were pretty damn perplexed with what they saw. HVK asked if he looked that much of an idiot coming out to the ring, and Triple H didn't understand this entire thing. You know, Rated RKO in his eyes were two of the biggest stars in WWE. Hunter wanted to assure them that they don't think that Rated RKO are jokes. Sarcastically, of course, because he asked the fans. He then talked about that live sex show and mentioned how Edge failed to rise to the occasion. He did praise Lita for getting Edge half aroused. Michaels then mentioned something and corrected a statement. Fully aroused, apparently. As for Randy, he's an icon. And the man was feeling himself and he was really basking in all that showering of praise. Hell, Triple H even revealed that Orin's the most downloaded wrestler on the internet before Triple H mentioned the gay community and he had a sense of embarrassment. He then showed this very unflattering image of Orin and his reactions like they found his hidden stash backstage. It was a pretty awkward moment for him and he just wanted this to end but suddenly Triple H brought up Michaels' this playgirl shoot. Orin the man in Triple H tonight but the game said he ain't swinging that way. Ed tried explaining it saying Orin wants to beat his ass and Hunter was confused. He ended up getting the memo and accepted. Sean told him that if they think they're gonna kill the legend at DX, then... Then... They never got to finish the sentence because the heels attacked. DX bounced back to send them running, and at the same time, Edge was desperate to find any sort of advantage over DX. He told Mr. McMahon that Cyber Sunday is fan interactive before mentioning a special guest referee for the matchup. They listed the choices, those being Coach, Bischoff, and Vince himself, and this idea ended up being confirmed shortly afterwards. 
about the main event itself, Rhea and RKO demonstrating just how intelligent they were. The problem though, was the fact that DX was two steps ahead. Despite the loss, Orin and Edge didn't really lose sleep over this. They were thinking ahead, you know, Cyber Sunday. The loss last week to them was typical DX. It wasn't like the same was gonna happen at the pay-per-view. A rematch was booked for that night and it went very well for Raid RKO because Eric Bischoff showed just how valuable he was by handing the legend killer a chair, which led to the W of course. He wasn't alone though. Edge, the coach, and Lita, they all played a part but Bischoff's efforts were what scored the W. On the final Raw before Cyber Sunday, Edge hosted the cutting edge with the Cyber Sunday candidates as guests. They each explained why they should officiate the tag match. Bischoff, he was talking about how he's all about controversy, you know, controversy creates cash, and he didn't think that DX were controversial at all. Nothing they did comes off as that, and voting him in, he promises to show them what controversy is all about. The coach tried acting all tough and stern, but obviously nobody took him seriously. McMahon, if voted, was eager to show the same level of respect to DX before announcing Shawn Michaels isn't able to make it to the show. Also, Triple H will face Randy Orton for the third week in a row, the tiebreaker match. Not only that, but Edge is a special referee of that match. Now about this one, Edge was all arrogant. He's feeling like he's the authority, but Triple H just whacked him with a microphone before hitting the pedigree. All this came from out of nowhere, and this meant the bout was turned into a normal matchup. Edge returned the favor later on, causing a DQ. Michaels wasn't there, of course, so Rated RKO had a field day. They blasted him with a steel chair. Orin screw up the RKO. Edge speared him, but once he turns around, the game had a sledgehammer in hand. Orin took a shot to the gut, and even though HBK wasn't there, Triple H, Super Triple H, stood tough. Alright, that's the build to the matchup. Ray and RKO were all desperate about proving that they're smarter, they're better than DX, and just wanting to get rid of them. And when you look at it, they, they actually were outsmarting DX and Kayfabe. But yes, the build was about Edge and Orange's resentment towards how DX go about things. They treat every bun and everything like a joke with no repercussions. Add to that, one way or another, Triple H and Shawn Michaels affected their careers. Alright. Before the match at Cyber Sunday, Shawn Michaels was beside himself. He couldn't believe that Eric Bischoff thought DX didn't know the meaning of controversy. This greatly offended him. So damn much before he mentioned a bunch of their moments in life. Michaels was so desperate to be controversial, so he asked a random chairman for his name. He's like, Stan, right? And he randomly kicked him and a bunch of others in order to prove he's controversial. As for who the vote ended up going to, well, it was Eric Bischoff. About as obvious and predictable as the 2011 Alberto Del Rio promo. Seriously though, Bischoff was the best choice, you know, he was a fresh change from Coach and McMahon. Those two had been attached to the whole DX storyline for nearly 5 months. Add to that, Eric never really interacted with DX in any of their iterations. As for the match itself, good. It's not the best match of 2006 or anything like that, but it was certainly a positive of Cyber Sunday. Bischoff storyline wise was officiating properly, fair and square, but then he got speared. Both teams started gaining momentum, or an RKO Triple H, but by the time another ref came in, he kicked out. And just when DX had the match won, Bischoff blessed the ref. He allowed Edge to use a chair on Michaels, and Triple H almost won anyways, but Orin whacked him before hitting an RKO on top of the chair. One, two, three. For the first time in a long time, DX actually lost the match. The men felt so rewarded. It was bigger than a title victory, the fact that they shut DX up. Up to this point, DX had over 10 or 15 tag team matches. And in almost every single one of them, they emerged victorious or they won it by disqualification. This time though, that wasn't the case. Todd Grisham called it a tainted victory and Edge exploded. He called them a chump stain and didn't want to hear no ifs, ends, or buts. They beat DX, a new era on Raw is dawning upon us. The era of rated RKO. With their huge victory at Cyber Sunday in the rearview mirror, the duo eyed World Tag Team Championship gold. Bischoff made things easier for them by booking them in a title match for the main event after Flair and Piper disrespected him. No DQ as well. On paper and in kayfabe, this looked like a clear title change because not only was it no disqualification, but Eric Bischoff was the special referee. The vets managed to hold on though, just in time for DX to interfere and cost him the match. They luckily ran away before this guy, who I can't believe was actually a WWE writer, like that's weird to think about, comes in and does stuff. I don't even want to talk about that, but anyways, the coach took notice of D-Generation X's mischief and still booked a rematch of the tag titles. But not only that, but he placed a bounty on their heads. A bunch of the lower card and mid card guys tried and failed to take advantage, and Sean and Hunter were no selling everything coming their way. Nonchalantly going on with their day, I should know. And because they were annoyed over evading these non-stop attempts, they left the building. Coach reminded them that they cannot re-enter, but nonetheless, the cash went with them. They stole it. And even though Coach was emphatic with the statement, they purchased two tickets from Crime Time, ruined Lita's day, and cost her the match against Mickey James. Right afterwards, Ray and RKO came out all angry with these turn of events, and the coach kicked them out. Security guards, though, looked pretty familiar. Now, Orin and Edge were two of the smartest bastards in WWE. They attacked Hot Rod and Isolated Flair, leading to a tag title victory, and on the topic of security, they failed to keep DX out of the building, 
and ended up taking a sweet shit music and pedigree combo. Around this time, it was announced that DX and Rand RKO were going to captain their own teams for a 5 on 5 Survivor Series elimination match. On DX's team was the Hardy Boys and CM Punk. Rand RKO, on the other hand, had Johnny Nitro, Gregory Helms, and Mike Knox. Now, with regards to this match, I like it. Even though it was a clean sweep, Rand RKO debuted the iconic mashup theme song, and it reminds me a lot of SCR 2008. I know a lot of you guys think the same. Mike Knox was seen as a complete afterthought, and the spot itself to me is pretty funny, but it's kind of messed up. There was that moment where Melina got a little too comfortable with the wrong person, and when you watch the match, the babyfaces didn't really have much moments where they were in danger. As time went on, Ray and RKO were the only two men remaining on their team, and so they opted to walk out. The good guys caught up to them, and Edge was super kicked, and only Orton was left now. And his reaction never ceases to make me laugh. He ended up getting thrown in, and we know the rest. As I said earlier, I enjoyed this match. The action wasn't memorable, of course, but the crowd makes up for it. I want to know what you guys think about this match in the comment section, because I never hear people talk about it that often. I don't know why it was a complete sweep. Probably never happened before in Survivor Series history, but I guess they wanted to protect the good guys. I'm not sure. Despite this, the story of DX and Raid RKO would take a turn for the better. You see, Edge and Orin had yet to show off that dark side that we all know about. So next time around, DX were enjoying themselves. They sent the Spear Squad back to Louisville via OPS. Michaels was a cheap ass, and they were getting ready to go out with a bunch of the guys from yesteryear. Edge, meanwhile, was hosting the Cutting Edge with a mystery guest. Whoever it was, they didn't come out, they were unresponsive, and Edge felt disrespected. Turns out, Randy Orton's got him, and therein lined Ric Flair in a pool of his own blood. Ray and RKO knew that DX were gone, and tried provoking them to appear, and they also made it seem like the duo were selfish bullies. But since they didn't care about anyone else, Edge and Randy wanted to send a message. By hitting the concertos. Reverse. It wasn't no regular concerto, it was straight in the face, which looked... Much, much, much worse. It was one of those segments where the fans couldn't boo. Rather, they were in shock with what had transpired. And this is something that Ric Flair has done a lot during his career. And it always seems to work. Orin followed up. And at the same time, those two were set to face off the Hardys for the titles in the main event. The champions bit a little more than they could chew. And Edge had to end it by disqualification. The whole thing made the Hardys look pretty tough. And at the same time, gave rated RKO their heat back. JR was promising DX was going to return. And business was going to pick up. And that did indeed happen the following week. The tag champions were so damn worried over Sean and Trouble. H that they had security. Kennedy of the Spear Squad returned and was desperate to join Raid RKO, and Edge quickly shut him down saying if he wants to join, then he's gotta prove himself by beating DX. About those two, well, it was back to the angry faces, you know? They weren't exactly happy and very festive anymore. They spoke positively about Flair, but about Edge and Orton, they were disgusted with their actions and told them that they made it personal. Michaels believed that they destroyed Flair because they knew damn well that it couldn't have occurred to them, DX. Triple H shockingly didn't speak, and he just looked all angry. DX did get the chance to do something about last week in the main event. Why? Because they teamed up with Matt and Jeff to face Eminem and Rated RKO. About that, yes, DX did whoop Rated RKO's ass, but Kenny crashed the party and this led to Edge stealing the victory. Now, even though Kenny did do something about DX, they punished him severely for it. He thought that by sacrificing himself for the champions, it meant he deserved to join Rated RKO, but they didn't see it that way. Orin told him that they would have won it regardless, and technically he's right, you know, they probably would have won the match anyway. A while later, Edge was set to face the game Triple H, and the match itself spiraled far out of control with Orin, Michaels, Dykstra, and Flair interfering, and so Coach opted to pull out the Teddy Long card and make it a six-man tag. Ric Flair managed to win it for his team, but afterwards the heels attacked, and it almost led to disaster for the Heartbreak Kid, but Triple H and his sledgehammer made the save. At the same time, it was announced that Rated RKO were going to face D-Generation X for the World Tag Team Championships at New Year's revolution. Following week, a number one contender's battle royal was booked with the winner challenging John Cena for the WWE Championship later that night. Rayad RKO and DX featured in the match, I should note. Triple H during the match was perceived as such a huge threat that four men had to toss him out. Shawn Michaels cracked open that defense and almost had it figured out, but Edge just flipped him backwards to win the title shot. Now, even though he's already champion, Edge was opting to defend the WWE title against Umaga and also face DX later on at the pay-per-view. Now, we all know that 2006-07, John Cena was absolutely overpowered, and so Randy Orton had to run in and RKO him when the ref didn't notice. Next, then made a run in, and similar to the steel cage match, they cost Edge the title. Orton was angry, Edge was on a whole other level in terms of frustration, and was it just me or did any of you guys want John Cena to join DX as a kid? But that wasn't it for the night. Red RKO did return the favor in a very memorable way. First of all, Edge whacked Triple H out of the ringside area and inside hit a double RKO on Shawn Michaels atop a steel chair. Triple H was ready to bring in the equalizer, but Edge is like, not tonight. JR shouting for them to leave him alone, calling for somebody to help, but nothing happened, and instead, Edge hit the concerto. You'd think that was over, but Orin followed up and left the audience in shock. So there it is. 
Triple H and Shawn Michaels talking about how they can never do that to them, but Rayad RKO clearly, clearly proved them wrong. I love the way this feud turned out. Rayad RKO desperately trying to get rid of DX that they were stooping this low, while DX on the other hand was going to re revert to that Unforgiven 06 attitude where they were remorseless, absolutely violent and brutal. Basically the worst kayfabe versions of themselves. Ahead of their encounter at New Year's Revolution, DX gave their final thoughts in the match. Shawn Michaels walked towards Rayad RKO saying he was still waiting to face the best wrestlers of this generation and he said that those two appeared to have a set. Michaels promised that at New Year's Revolution, the duo are going to find out the difference in having a set and knowing what to do with them. Triple H finally grabbed the mic and was pretty disappointed. You know, he was expecting a fight in Miami, but those two were out with the yeast infection. What the hell? The game got serious for a minute, saying he knows Ray and RKO are coming Sunday. He also said that they were under the belief that they had DX in the palm of their hand, similar to McMahon earlier on. He compared himself and Michaels to Frosty Mini Wheats, saying they have a sugary side, and the other side is a whole different story. The game promised that they're gonna beat Rated RKO's ass, we're gonna make them bleed, leaving them in a heap, and this is a weird ass promo. Not saying it's bad, just very odd, but I was pretty entertained. Rated RKO did appear in New Year's Revolution and tried offering their response. Edge made it simple. In order for him and Orin to take their spot at the very top, they've gotta take out DX. Orin said that they've been destroying DX not for the pleasure of it, but for their future. Edge saw this night as the end. DX had their fun. They sold tickets, t-shirts, but it's the end. And with regards to the blow-off match, I don't know if it was supposed to be, but regardless, it was good. Ray and RKO were mostly in control, managed to keep Sean away from the game and was busted open. Triple H was desperate for that tag, but it was looking less and less likely as time went on, until Michaels countered the RKO. The game was in, the crowd turned into a raucous one, and the pace picked up, but then Triple H hit the spine buster on Randy Orton, tearing his quad once again. The commentary team felt that it was because Ray and RKO worked on it earlier, and couldn't really wrestle due to this. But since he's a great sport, an amazing sport, he managed to see this one out. Four men improvised on this, saw Shawn Michaels go absolutely insane. He hit this plancha, assaulted the ref, blasted Edge in order with a chair, and the blood was pouring out of Orin's face like rain. Triple H, who was injured, even hit the pedigree on Edge on top of the announce table, but Shawn overshadowed that with the elbow. It was a wild turn of events that, according to the referee, Marty Elias was called 100% on the fly. The part of the match where Triple H tore his quad, all the way up to the elbow through the table. That was 100% improvised. Also, according to him, the feud wasn't going to end here. Apparently, Ray and Dark here were going to escape with the belts. And I don't, I don't know where he's going to go from here on, but that's what he said. Now, in my personal opinion, I believe that Triple H was going to go on to WrestleMania 23. And this is well known. And it's even confirmed by a couple of WWE documentaries. But I feel like Ray and Dark here would have lost the titles to them. And the story would have continued as it did in real life. Tensions rising between the two heels. That's how I think it would have went. The game went away for about 7 months, returning with a beard and once more a lone wolf. Nonetheless, it was a good match. It was a ridiculous ending, and the intensity in those last few minutes coming from DX rivaled just about anything WWE did in that year, in my personal opinion. Like, it was off the charts, like the intensity it was too much. Now, just because Triple H was gone, it didn't mean the feud was over. The next night on Raw, Edge and Randy Orton came out to complain. Orton admitted that they all talked smack. Now, why is he saying this? was well, because DX promised to leave them a bloody heap, whereas they guaranteed the end of DX. Now to Orin, it was lose a battle, win a war. Sure, they got their asses beat, they lost a ton of blood, but it was worth it. Why was it worth it to Randy Orton? Because Triple H tore his quadricep. So it's basically a win for them. DX is done. But despite this, they were still looking to get rid of Shawn Michaels. Once again, this was about ending careers and DX was on life support according to them. Now, a handicap match was booked for the following week that would have seen Edge and Orin team up to face Shawn Michaels. Instead of waiting till next week, the Heartbreak Kid opted to come out and respond to Rated RKO's statement. The reason why HBK came out was for the fans and to answer the Is DX Done question. Michael seemed very uncertain over this and didn't exactly give an answer. On the topic of Rated RKO, he said that he'll deal with them. Yeah, about that. Well, it was really looking like Michael's was on the verge of being ended. But it turns out, in Triple H's absence, Michael's essentially gained his strength and came out looking like the toughest guy in the world. There was this moment where Edge caught Orin with a spear. Unless Orin managed to recover an attack leading to a concerto spot that HBK countered. He brought in the sledgehammer, blasted both men before connecting on the concerto on Randy Orin. Edge's beating compared to the one Orin took was essentially nothing. He basically left unscathed. And it's not like he didn't take a beating, it's just Orin's was much, much, much worse. This would cause a rift in the relationship with Ray and RKO, and in my opinion, marked the beginning of the end. Orin confronted Edge about this, and it was a pretty heated encounter. You see, Randy Orin didn't like the fact that his partner left him alone with Shawn Michaels. Edge tried saying he was hurt in the ribs, but Orin didn't want to hear it. 
One thing to mention is that Edge was set to face HBK in a street fight, and Orin didn't explicitly state his intentions for that one. About that one, while those two had a pretty damn intense, heated brawl that I suggest you watch at least once. Shawn Michaels had things figured out and was ready to connect with the concerto, and Randy Orin emerges from thin air and RKO's him, giving Edge the victory. So unlike Edge, Randy showed that he's got his partner's back. Except for Sunday, of course. About that, Ray RKO did work as a unit, they were actually getting work done, but Edge at one moment got ahead of himself and Orin took notice. He was shotting at him and look at that one hand RKO, I thought it was beautiful. They had a little moment there, but Edge quickly deviated Orin away from this discussion, opting to change the subject to The Undertaker. This seemed to work in their favor as The Undertaker was isolated, being beaten into a bloody heap, then Michaels tossed Orin over before kicking Edge out. To make matters worse for Ray at RKO, the next night they got in an argument over who should be number one contender. Also, they were set to defend their titles against Cena and Michaels later that night. About that one, they lost the titles. Yep, they lost the titles because John Cena and HBK apparently needed them more. Anyways, the issues between Radar K would continue to escalate in the following week as both men were hell-bent on winning that WrestleMania spot. Both men's ego got the best of them, referring to catch the other off guard, and I love how neither guy was a babyface. As you know, Shawn Michaels was victorious. Nonetheless, it was as though those problems were resolved and Rated RKO was back to focusing on the Tag Team Championships. The duo were on the same page, all was good, but then Shawn Michaels ruined everything. So let me explain how it went. HPK blasted Edge with the title belt. Once he turns around, it's in Orin's hands. He has a look of betrayal on his face and decided to ditch his partner. Orin's left all alone and the champions took advantage, but again for the third time, the problems disappeared by the next episode, only to reappear after some miscommunication. You see, Edge passed Randy a title to use on HBK, but the ref confiscated it, leading to the loss. Instead of beating around the bush, Randy Orton was honest. He didn't want to lie and straight up told Edge that he doesn't have his back. This of course led to Edge calling Arizona a racist state. Fuel would be added to the fire when Randy Orton qualified for money in the bank. Edge had done so about a month earlier, and at this point, Ray Dark Hill was no more. Both men's intentions were the same. They won the WWE Championship. Since Orton was now a thorn on his side, he intelligently asked Mr. McMahon to book a matchup between Bobby Lashley and Randy Orton. He claimed that he'll be supporting Orton in case, you know, you know, if Bobby Lashley beats him, he'll hop on in and beat Lashley himself. Hell, he even asked McMahon to throw Orton out of the money in the bank if he refused to appear. Right when ECW began the next night, Orton called him an SOB and called him out on the whole entire thing. But Edge assured him that he's got his back. As a man of his word, the radar superstar was there. Tension was still in the air though, and he tried interfering and as a result of this was ejected. Orin began shouting at him for leaving him stranded, but this was his plan all along. As expected, Orin fell victim to the ECW champion. He was well aware of the fact that Edge abandoned him, and he claimed that it was an accident before Orin revealed that he managed to insert Edge's spot, the Money in the Bank spot, in a last chance battle royal. This was due to Mr. McMahon, you know, he didn't really assist him in his efforts to dismantle Bobby Lashley. Both these guys were douches, you couldn't really root for any of them. About that battle royal, Edge did retain the spot with last, last by night's end. On the final ride before WrestleMania, Edge held a special cutting edge with his guests being the WrestleMania 23 ladder match competitors. He took a long time bragging about himself, belittling the competition, starting with Matt Hardy. He said that he's shocked that Hardy's at WrestleMania, and he responded saying that he's gonna beat him up and leave him flat on his back like his ex-girl Lita. As expected, Edge took that insult to heart and moved on to King Book. He's talking peasants or whatever before Finley got fed up, called Edge chisel chin before Randy Orton told him not to hurt Edge's feelings, saying that he might use this as an excuse to duck out of this match, just like he's done for the past month. And that was true, because Edge was given all kinds of excuses for why he refused to compete. Kennedy verified the statement, shouted his name before Edge poked insults at Jeff Hardy's way. He mocked him before Hardy said that he's stealing the show at WrestleMania, and all that remained was the hometown hero. Edge listed his addictions before Punk made things awkward for him. The bastard decided, you know what, I'm gonna stir the pot, and decided to run away. The baby faces realized what's up and ran after him, and I, I just love this segment. I was laughing the whole time with Edge getting offended with the responses. He's trying to gaslight the situation to handle some good stuff. With regards to the ladder match, it was excellent. The action flows through well with no dull moments at all, and it was definitely one of the best openers in WrestleMania history. Raid RKO had their moments, such as the Spears in Abundance or the RKOs, but ultimately though, Jeff Hardy and Matt envied Edge so damn much that Jeff decided to obliterate him. That spot was too much, Edge himself said that it hurt like hell, and it's for sure one of the most memorable moments to have occurred in Money in the Bank. In the end though, Mr. Kennedy was the one who stood tall. Following WrestleMania, the heat and tension between Randy Orton and Edge increased, as the Radar Superstar stuck his nose in the Ledger Killer's business. He nearly cost him that WWE title shot after spearing him, and like I said earlier, they were both looking to become champion. 
Luckily for both men, they would get that opportunity at Backlash as John Cena defended the title in a fatal four-way match. In the build-up to the pay-per-view though, Randy thought it was best for them to put their issues aside. Edge even called Orton the best partner he's ever had, and it was as though Rated RKO was back. Yeah, no. That Rated RKO reunion was shut down before it even began. In light of that, Spear a match between the two was set for Raw the following week, but it turns out John Cena and HBK went at it for an hour. Now, I read up that this was because Randy Orton destroyed a hotel room. I believe it was in Germany that he destroyed a hotel room, and they decided to punish him by removing him from the Raw card that week. That Fatal 4-Way, though, it turned out to be, in my opinion, a top 3 in WWE history. The excitement was off the charts in Atlanta. Each man brought it and then some. Like, I lose count of the awesome moments and spots from this match, like, there's just so many. It was really looking like HPK's night, everything was going well from a one mistake cost him, and it's truly one of the best matches of 2007. Now, my recommendation for match of the video goes to this. On the April 30th, 2007 episode of Raw, Edge finally faced Randy Orton in a one-on-one -on -one match. The reason why I'm recommending this is not necessarily because it's the best, but because of the story. Randy Orton and Edge were always somewhat fringe due to their egos. Eventually, it was going to come down to this because both men were way too ambitious, add to that they only formed the group to take out DX. Eventually, it was going to come down to this. The match itself was somewhat overlooked. Like, whoever mentions it, though, speaks positively about it. And the match itself was pretty unique due to the situation. You know, we had a heel on one side of the ring and we had a super heel. And yes, Edge is who I'm talking about on the other. Now, let's talk about the match. After spearing the Legend Killer right onto the announce table, Edge finally took control. The fans initially didn't exactly cheer for somebody, but as time went on, it was clear that their loyalty lied with Rand Yorton. He was a de facto babyface. Orton struggled greatly with Edge's offense, but after a backbreaker, he started finding himself. The match kicked off a notch with several impactful moves and near falls, and at one point, Orton's face landed on the turnbuckle, busting him open. Both men were breaking the rules in order to score that W. Randy was showing resiliency, but ultimately, it was Edge who was better on this night. I love this match. Weird circumstances with the whole heel versus heel thing. The crowd adds to it as well, and it might not light the world on fire or anything like that, but it was still a pretty nice matchup. Matter of fact, from the Rated RKO run, I'd say it was a third best match behind the New Year's Revolution Tag Team match and the Fatal Forward from Backlash, which is the best in my opinion. Alright, so that's Rated RKO. They would go their separate ways, you know, Edge would go to SmackDown, whereas Orin would finally begin a proper main event run with the whole Age of Orin thing. By year's end though, they would reform for one night only, after Randy Orin refused to join Evolution. I thought that was a cool moment itself. They even had a feud in 2010, which I will eventually talk about. And we all know about what they did recently, you know, last year. All right. Once again, I enjoyed making this video. I loved seeing the gradual transition from tag partners to enemies. And when you look at it from the beginning, they were never going to last. Obviously, I'm talking about in kayfabe. Edge was more evil, of course, sabotaging Randy's matches the moment he set his sights on the title. Whereas Orin was initially all about the team. My personal favorite match from this run is probably... Backlash 2007, you know, that's the best match in my opinion involving Rated RKO. I don't think anything touches it. But as I said, recommendation for match of the video goes to their blow-off match. It delivered and then some, and a lot of people should be talking about it more often. What did you guys think of Rated RKO? Please comment down below. And that's it for this video. Make sure you hit the spear on the like button and perhaps the RKO on the subscribe button. Peace. I'm out.